All right, let's talk about molarity, which again is in units of moles per liter. So you can see the expression for molarity down below. It's equal to moles of solute over liters of solution. So specifically, we have to use liters as our unit for volume. Now also notice that you can abbreviate molarity as capital M, and chemists will know that the capital M is referring to moles per liter. Now this type of concentration is useful in chemistry because we use moles so often. And we know that we can convert moles to grams using molar mass. So that's why it's particularly useful in chemistry. Um, we don't often use the percent compositions. So let's uh, go through an example problem. So let's say a solution contains three grams of sodium chloride and 500 milliliters of water. What is the molarity of the solution? All right, so we know that uh, we need moles of solute, but we're given grams. So how can we convert grams of sodium chloride to moles of sodium chloride? Well, previously we said that to convert from grams to moles, we need to divide by the molar mass. Okay, so let's do that first. Let's figure out the molar mass of sodium chloride. So pause the video, calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so uh, looking at the periodic table, sodium has a mass of 22.99 grams per mole. Chlorine has a mass of 35.45 grams per mole. So adding that together, let's see, we get four, four, eight, Okay, we get 58.44 grams per mole. Okay, so now we can do our conversion. So we'll divide 3 grams of sodium chloride by the molar mass. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 0 0.050 moles of sodium chloride. Now, our other value is 500 milliliters. That's our volume. But we have to convert that to liters. Now, in the previous video, we said that there are 1,000 milliliters in every liter. So we just have half a liter, right? And half of a liter is equal to 0.5 liters. All right, so we've got 0 0.5 liters of water. Oh, actually, I'm gonna put an extra zero on there just for sig figs. Looks like we have three sig figs. Okay, so now we can uh, put what we know into our equation. So we've got 0 0.050 moles of sodium chloride and 0 0.5 liters of water. So if we divide 0 0.05 by 0 0.5, we get 0 0.1 moles per liter. So that's our concentration of the solution, we have 0.1 moles of sodium chloride for every one liter of solution. And again, we could also abbreviate the units. So we could also write this as 0 0.10 capital M. All right, let's do another problem using molarity. So let's say we already know the concentration of the solution, and that concentration is 1.2 moles per liter. 
And then let's say we also know that the solution contains 0.5 moles of the solute. So we want to figure out what is the volume of the solution. So really, we're trying to solve for the denominator. OK, so let's rearrange our equation. So molarity is equal to moles over volume. And we need to rearrange this to solve for the volume. So pause the video, see if you can figure out how to solve the equation for volume, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by volume, and that way volume will cancel on the right. But now volume is in the numerator on the left. Okay, so now we have V times capital M is equal to moles. And let's see, I still want to isolate volume so I'm going to divide both sides by capital M. So that will cancel capital M on the left. And that gives us volume is equal to moles divided by molarity. All right, so now we just plug in what we have, 0 0.50 moles. And our molarity is 1.2. Now, I'm going to write the full units uh, for molarity because that's going to help me cancel my units. So I can cancel moles, and I'm left with liters. OK. So uh, 0.5 divided by 1.2. Uh, my calculator gives me 0 0.42, and I'm just rounding up. And then my unit is liters. So the volume of the solution is 0 0.42 liters. So you can use this molarity expression to solve for molarity, or if you have uh, particular information, you could solve for the volume, or you could solve for the amount of solute in moles. Okay, so I wanted to apply this to um, the human body. And we actually have a lot of solutions in our body. In fact, our bodies are mostly made up of water. And then things are dissolved in that water. Now, uh, some typical concentrations of different ions in our body are listed down below. So in our blood plasma, for example, we have several ions, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, and bicarbonate ions. And you can see that there are varying uh, concentrations for each, and they're pretty small. Um, for example, sodium ions are present uh, at about 0.138 moles per liter. Uh, but if we go to magnesium ions, the amount is 0.003 moles per liter. And then stomach acid is um, hydrochloric acid, and the concentration of that is about 0.1 moles per liter. And then in our urine, we have uh, different molecules here, sodium chloride, phosphate, and then urea. Now, obviously, these concentrations can change depending on what you eat that day or if you have a particular uh, condition that can change those ion concentrations. But these are just some typical concentrations. Now, usually when you go to the doctor's office and they draw blood, they give you results in a slightly different set of units. Um, so you might not see molarity on your uh, actual results. 
All right, so how can we uh, use molarity? Well, first, uh, let's talk about some different ways that we might have to calculate molarity. And we already did this, actually. So what if you're trying to calculate molarity, but you're given a mass instead of moles? So we saw this earlier. We're going to convert the mass of the solute into moles. And we're going to do that by dividing by the molar mass. Oh, that looks like a percent sign. I meant to draw the division symbol. There we go. And then, as long as we know the liters of the solution, we can divide moles of solute by liters to get our molarity. So let's do another practice problem. Let's say a chemist dissolves 1.33 grams of sodium chloride in 1.5 liters of water. What is the molarity of the solution? So again, we want to convert grams of sodium chloride into moles. And we're going to do that by dividing by the molar mass. Now, luckily, we've already calculated the molar mass. We said that the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44 grams per mole. All right, so knowing that information, see if you can calculate the molarity of this solution. So pause the video, try it on your own first, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so if we divide 1.33 grams of sodium chloride by its molar mass, we should get uh, 0.023 moles of sodium chloride. So luckily, we were already given the volume in liters, so we can very easily calculate the molarity. We're just going to divide our mole amount by the amount of liters. So 0 0.023 divided by 1.5. So this should give us a value of 0 0.015 moles of sodium chloride for every liter of solution. And then remember, you could also write this with a capital M, which is just equal to moles per liter. Now, another handy way that we can use molarity we can calculate the needed volume of solution if we're given the concentration and the number of moles that we desire in our solution. Or we could calculate the number of moles of solute that we need or have given the concentration and the volume. So really, all we're saying here is that molarity can be used as a conversion factor. Because remember, molarity is equal to moles per liter. So for example, let's say that we have liters of our solution and we know the molarity. Well, we could multiply the liters by molarity and that will give us moles of solute. So really, we're multiplying the volume by the molarity. Now, once we have moles of our solute, we can convert that into a mass by multiplying by the molar mass of the solute. OK, so let's look at an example of how we would do this. So let's say that we need to make a 0.9 molar potassium chloride solution. And this will be in water. Let's say you start with exactly one liter of water. 
how many grams of potassium chloride should you add to the water to make it a 0.9 molar solution? All right, so again, we're gonna start with the volume or liters of solution. And then we're going to convert that into moles of potassium chloride by multiplying by the molarity that we want. And then once we have moles of potassium chloride, we can convert that into grams of potassium chloride by multiplying by the molar mass. All right, so uh, let's start with step one. So we were given one liter of solution and we're going to multiply that by the concentration. So I'm going to use moles per liter for this, just so we can cancel our units. Okay, so let's cancel our unit of liters. And this is super easy, right? It's just one times 0.9. So this will give us 0 0.9 moles of potassium chloride. So that makes sense. We're starting with exactly a liter of water and we want our solution to be 0.9 moles per liter. So we need 0.9 moles of potassium chloride, which is the solute. All right, now, unfortunately, we don't have a good way to measure moles of something in the lab. We have to weigh the solute. So we need to convert 0.9 moles into grams. Okay, so we need to figure out the molar mass of potassium chloride. So pause the video, see if you can calculate the molar mass of potassium chloride, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so potassium has a mass of 39.09 grams per mole. And then chlorine has a mass of 35.45 grams per mole. Okay, so if we add those together, we get 74.54 grams per mole, or something close to that, depending on your periodic table. All right, so let's multiply 0.9 moles of potassium chloride by its molar mass. And we'll end up with grams of potassium chloride. So my calculator gave me 67.1 grams of potassium chloride. All right, so what that tells us is if we want to make this particular solution with this particular concentration, we would have to add 67.1 grams of potassium chloride. So we'd, we'd weigh that out in a little weigh boat, and then we'd add that to one liter of water. And then we'd mix it all around and the concentration of that solution should be 0.9 moles per liter. Okay, now I mentioned earlier we can use molarity as a conversion factor. So let's look at an example of how we can do that. So let's consider the chemical equation below. We have hydrochloric acid, HCl, reacting with sodium hydroxide, and we're forming water and sodium chloride. So suppose we wanna know how many liters of hydrochloric acid solution will react with a given mass of sodium hydroxide. 
So a typical approach to that problem is shown on the right. So we're going to start with the mass of sodium hydroxide that we want to react with. And remember, we always convert to moles. That's always a good first step, convert to moles of sodium hydroxide. And then similar to our previous flow charts that we've used, we're going to convert that into moles of hydrochloric acid. Because again, we're trying to figure out how much hydrochloric acid do we need to react with sodium hydroxide. Now in this case, instead of converting moles of HCl to grams like we have in the past, we're actually going to convert this into a volume because this time we're dealing with a solution instead of just a solid. So to do that, we're going to use the concentration or molarity of the solution. So we're going to uh, divide by the molarity in this case. All right, so let's do an example problem. So how many milliliters of a 2.75 molar HCl solution are needed to react with 185 grams of sodium hydroxide? And we're just using the same equation we used before, and it's already balanced, and it looks like everything is in a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. Okay, so... Again, we're told that the molarity of our solution is 2.75 moles per liter. And we're also uh, given that we have 185 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we want to know how much of our solution of HCl do we need to fully react with that much sodium hydroxide. So again, our flow chart, we're going to convert grams of sodium hydroxide into moles. And then we'll convert that into moles of HCl. And then in the last step, we're going to convert moles of HCl into liters of HCl. Okay, so in the first step, just like we normally do, we're going to divide by the molar mass to get moles. In the second step, when we're converting from moles to moles, we use our ratios or coefficients from the balanced equation. But again, luckily everything's in a one-to-one -one ratio, so that'll be easy. And then in the last step, we're going to divide by the molarity to get to liters. All right, so let's, let's write all of that out with numbers. All right, so we'll start with our grams of NaOH, and then we're going to divide by the molar mass of NaOH. Ooh, so we need the molar mass. So pause the video, see if you can calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40 grams per mole. So we're going to divide by 40 grams. All right, and then that will cancel grams of NaOH and we'll be left with moles. In the next step, we're going to convert moles of sodium hydroxide into moles of hydrochloric acid. So we're on step two. So again, we have a one-to-one -one ratio between everything. So we'll just write one mole of HCl in the numerator, since that's what we're solving for. And we'll divide by one mole of NaOH. So that's just from our balanced equation up above. So we're canceling moles of NaOH and we're left with moles of HCl. 
And now we're going to divide by the concentration. So we'll put one liter of our HCl solution in the numerator and then divide by 2.75 moles of HCl. Okay, so in terms of our units, moles of HCl will cancel and we'll be left with liters of HCl. So let's simplify this. It looks like in the numerator we have 185 times 1 times 1 times 1. So we'll just leave it as 185. And then we're dividing by 40 times 1 times 2.75. And then our final unit is liters. Okay, so uh, if we punch that into our calculator, we should get a value of 1.68 liters. Now one last thing, notice the question asked for milliliters. Now we already said before there are 1,000 milliliters per liter. So all we need to do is multiply this by 1,000 and that will give us 1,680 milliliters of our HCl solution. Okay, so going back to what we were originally trying to figure out, we were told that we had 185 grams of sodium hydroxide. So let's just draw a little picture. Let's say this is our sodium hydroxide. And we wanted to figure out how much of an HCl solution should we add to completely react with that NaOH. So we figured out that we have to add 1,680 milliliters of that solution in order to completely react with the NaOH. All right. So there is um, another practice problem right after this one. If you want to try this one on your own, you can. Um, I'm not going to go over it in the video because I don't want to make it super long. Um, but definitely try this out. See if you can figure it out on your own. Now in the next video, we're going to go over dilutions. So how do we dilute a concentrated solution and get to a different concentration, a more dilute concentration. Luckily, this one's a lot easier. <laughs> so I will see you then.